Handiwork by Joshua Wagner Ah, uh, well, where do you even start? Sufficient to say I was young. We were young. That age where the boys were starting to get interested in the girls, but social decorum dictated that we maintain the facade of girls' icky. It was an awkward age for sure. Hair in strange places and parents too embarrassed to tell us what was going on. You've been there. Typical coming-of-age stuff. Well, not to a point. But we should probably ease into it. Like I said, I was at the age where I started to pay attention to girls. The one girl in particular. I couldn't care less about the rest. Haley. There was something about her. Something about the long, jet-black, wavy hair that was always just a little bit messy. Something about the dark rings under her eyes that I assume were there because they stayed up all night playing video games. Something about how she always seemed like she was somewhere else, far, far away from her body. There was definitely something about her, even if I couldn't put it into words. There were times I tried to start a conversation with her, but I'd panic and walk right past her, never saying a single word. Instead, I just hoped and fantasized that one day she'd just walk right up to me and admit she had a crush on me all school year. But I was... Well, I wasn't exactly handsome, you know, by kid standards. I wasn't athletic or funny or charming or all that smart, really. In fact, I was kind of weird. The proverbial quiet kid obsessed with horror movies and books and monsters and slasher films and... You see where this is going. I was that kid. And it's cool now, in this day and age, but back then, it wasn't like that. You did get picked on and bullied for being an nerd. And though we didn't ask for it by Naruto running through the halls, we didn't have Naruto back then. We just got our asses kicked behind the bleachers when the bullies caught us talking about stuff we liked. Or playing Yu-Gi-Oh, or trading Dragon Ball Z figures, or playing Pokemon on our Game Boy Pockets, minding our own business. Not to go too far off topic, but yeah. Anyone who says that kids got bullied for Naruto running in school, they were probably one of the bullies. Kids having fun isn't asking to be bullied, and... Never mind. Touchy subject. Lots of story to tell. Anyway, back to me. So yeah... I had that one fantasy I was holding on to every time I saw Haley walk into class in the morning. But every day she walked right by me, straight to her seat, like I wasn't even there. I barely knew anything about her for lack of actual conversation. Till one particular October day. It started like any other, with me getting shoved up against the lockers by Wesley, a kid who had it out for me in particular and wasn't afraid to let me know it in various creative ways. I felt one of the locks dig deep into the meat of my arm, and him and his friends all burst out laughing at the sight and sound of me bouncing off the metal. Quit your bitching. If you're not going to watch where you're going, you better get used to getting shoved into lockers, dickweed. Wesley mocked me as he turned to get to class, leaving me there to rub my aching shoulder. Nice talking to you too, Wesley. Like always. As I sat at my desk waiting for class to start, my backpack had fallen over, and the book I had been reading fell out onto the floor. The title still escapes me to this day, but I remember the cover vividly. It was a girl on the beach in a yellow bikini at sunset with bite marks from a vampire on her neck. It was a horror slash romance slash young adult book. To my terror, it slid out into the open just as Haley was walking by, and that's when she stopped in her tracks glaring down at the embarrassing novel. And then, out of nowhere, she slowly leaned down and picked it up. After looking at it for a second, she handed it back to me and said, Is it any good? I didn't know what to do. My heart was beating out of my chest. I couldn't breathe. I could feel myself starting to sweat. And my mouth was drying up like a sponge in the Sahara. Mm-hmm, was all I could muster as I took the book from her. She just stood there for another second before she finally headed to her own desk. That was it. I'd had it. I worked up every ounce of courage I probably ever had in my entire life and blurted out, 
You can borrow it if you want. I, uh, I'm almost done. You can take it when I'm done and we can talk about it. I wheezed to a stop when I noticed every eye and every desk in my vicinity was locked on me. Probably alarmed from hearing me say so many words back to back for the first time. Hmm. Yeah, okay, I'd like that. She answered with a small nod before walking the rest of the way to her desk and sitting down. It was just a few words, but I could feel my heart almost explode from hearing them. The rest of that day, I spent every opportunity reading to finish the book and be able to give it to her at the end of the day. And when I finally read the last page, that's when it hit me. I'd have to walk up to her and actually give her the book. Why that horrified me so much, I don't know. But I might as well have been skydiving without a parachute because <laughs> I must have had three distinct panic attacks before the last bell rang to end the school day. Is that the book? Haley's voice unexpectedly snatched my attention away from the teacher. All the worry for nothing. She had walked up to me, and she had spoke to me first again. It was all too good to be true. I said, is that it? Can you finish with it? Oh, uh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I finished it during study hall. I said, almost shoving it into her. It was really good. Hmm, okay. I'll read it tonight and bring it back tomorrow. She told me as she stuffed it into the front pocket of a backpack. Tomorrow's Saturday, I told her, remembering it was Friday and we wouldn't be at school. Oh, yeah, it is. I forgot. She mumbled in that absentee demeanor of hers as she examined the book, its size, the page count, and the font size. So, meet me at the playground across the road from the old abandoned gas station at... 2? I'll give it back to you there. Oh no, that's okay, you don't have to rush through it. Take as long as you want and give it back whenever. It's no big deal. It's fine, I read fast. So tomorrow at the playground... She repeated before walking away and out into the hall. Yeah, okay. I said before she was out of earshot. You look happy with something. My mom told me later that afternoon when I got home. Good day at school? Huh? Oh, yeah, I, I guess so. I answered before slipping into my room and heading straight for the bookshelf to scour through for another book to lend Haley when she was done with that one. I could barely sleep the whole night. I was so anxious about meeting her at the playground. I knew it would take me about ten minutes to get there, so by... 1.50, I was barreling out of the door and down the street. I have suspect that she wouldn't even actually bother showing up in the first place. Well, when I got to the playground, she was already there, waiting for me on the merry-go-round, rocking by herself, side to side with her legs. So I hopped off my bike and walked over to meet her. But as I got closer, I could hear... She was quietly singing to herself. Great. Green gobs of greasy, grimy gopher guts, mutilated monkey meat, dirty little birdie feet, French fried eyeball swimming in a pool of blood. Great green gobs of greasy, grimy gopher guts, mutilated monkey meat, crushed up a parakeet, wormy vomit flowing down a filthy street. Purple pails of every color, porpoise, pus. Mutilated monkey meat, sautéed skunk tails, always such a tasty treat, if only I had a spoon. Um, Haley, you said to meet you here at two, right? I asked, causing her to pause and lay back across the merry-go-round and tilt her head back to look at me. It would explain why I'm sitting here all by myself in an empty playground on Saturday, she said casually. Book, she added holding it up in the air for me to see. What did you think? I asked nervously as I inched closer to her. It was good. I liked the mysterious stranger type stuff. And you don't see any vampire stories set on the beach. Might be one of the reasons I like the Lost Boys so much. She answered, waving the book back and forth over her head. You're into horror stuff? I asked, shuffling a little closer. Like I was expecting her to suddenly explode or something. Mm-hmm. It's my favorite thing. 
she told me, spinning the merry-go-round to where I was standing. Movies, books, comics, anything like that. What about you? Me? Oh, yeah. My mom says I'm obsessed with it. My room looks like a mini horror museum with all the posters and models and stuff in there. I joked. As soon as I said that, she sat up like a rocket, her face stopping a few inches shy of headbutting the hell out of me. Can I see? I want to see it. She asked, more like demanded, I think. You, you want to go to my house to see my room? I questioned, half suspecting I was having a really vivid dream, and that there was absolutely no way this girl I had this crush on for so long was pressing me to come and look at all my goofy horror crap in my room. Hmm. She confirmed with another small nod, her face still right up next to mine. Can I? Um, yeah, I guess. You want to go now? I started to ask, but that's when I noticed she had shifted her attention to something over my shoulder and was focused intently on whatever it was. So I turned to see for myself. It was this old man wearing ragged, dirty clothes. He was skulking down the street and had his eyes on us. We both kept watching him as he vanished into the empty gas station, where I assumed he must be using as a home. Come on, let's go. Haley finally spoke up. Sure. I agreed, walking over to where my bike was and picking it up off the ground. What's up, dickweed? I heard Wesley's voice from next to me. Nice bike. Please, Wesley, you already do this to me every day at school. Can I at least have my weekends off? I begged quietly, hoping Haley wouldn't hear me being a wimp. Sure, that sounds fair. Just give me the bike and I'll go away. Wesley, please! I hissed, trying to get him to just leave me be. Hey, are you here with a girl? Holy shit. I bet Kevin five dollars you were queer. Guess I lost. He mocked when he noticed Haley walking up beside me. Is he bothering you? She asked me, looking back and forth between us. Let's just go. Oh, I see. She's your babysitter, huh? Going to go change your diaper for you? He said as he laughed in my face. I could feel my cheeks start to get hot from the embarrassment. And then I noticed Haley wasn't standing next to me anymore. Great. She left. I thought before I saw that she had just walked off to the side a little and was bending down to pick something off the ground whilst Wesley was still busy heckling me. By then I was more fixated on what Haley was doing as she picked up a baseball sized rock off the ground and without her expression changing even once, she chucked it straight into the side of his head. Hard. I heard a dull thump right before Wesley's eyes glazed over and he started falling sideways, his legs too stiff to let him collapse straight down. Once he was on the ground, Haley squatted down beside him for a second before standing back up and declaring, He's still alive. We should probably go now though, in case that changes. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, I agreed reflexively. I have never seen anyone get beamed in the skull with a rock like that. Let's get out of here before he wakes up and gets really mad. Hey, Mom. Can my friend come in for a little while? I asked, sticking my head through the front door. Sure, just behave yourselves. She called back from the kitchen when she was loading the dishwasher. Wait, a friend? Since when? Let's go, I told Haley, leading her inside and towards my room. Wow, you weren't kidding. It does look like a museum in here. She said excitedly as she shot into my room and started pouring over all my stuff. Where did you get all this stuff from? Here and there. I've been collecting it for a while now. Sun Coast, Hot Topic, Spencer's, Internet. A lot of Internet. Just wherever I can find it. I explained as she flipped through my books. What's your favorite? She asked me when she moved on to my movies. Oh, I... I don't think I could say for sure. You know, just because something's a horror movie doesn't mean it's supposed to tell the same kind of story as another horror movie. Like, I like the ones that mess with your head and keep you in the dark for different reasons, and I like the ones with unkillable slashes of terrifying monsters. Hmm. Good answer. You passed the test. She said, scanning through the movie collection. I haven't seen this one yet. What's it about? 
she asked, pulling a tape off a bookshelf. What? Mimic? Oh, that's a really good one. It's about giant killer insects that pretend to be humans, but, like, not very well, so they look really creepy. Can we watch it? That sounds pretty cool. She asked, holding up the tape. You want to watch... Yeah, I'm sure. Just put that one back on the shelf. It's for collecting. I had the DVD in my CD case. We can watch it on my PS2. I told her, unzipping the case and flipping to the right page. Oh yeah, I forgot those things can play DVDs. She mumbled to herself as she slid the tape back into its place on the shelf. As I excitedly pushed the button to open the tray and sat the disc in it, I felt a tug on my sleeve. I turned to see Haley pointing with her mouth open. Are you hungry? I asked and she answered with a nod. I haven't eaten today. She told me as she rubbed her stomach. Oh, okay. Let's go get some food and we can watch the movie whilst we eat. I said, leading her out of my room and into the kitchen. Hey, what do we have to eat that doesn't take long? I asked Mom, who was still straightening up. Oh, well, let's see. She paused when she noticed Haley. Oh my goodness, she's cute. She leaned down and whispered in my ear. Is that the girl you had a little crush on? Oh my god, yes. I yes, back. I'll tell you later, what about the food? Oh, sure. Let's see. She hummed to herself as she thought. Quick to make, quick to make. How about chicken sandwiches and soup? She asked, opening up one of the cabinets. I turned to look at Haley, who nodded in agreement. Yeah, that's good. I answered, walking over to pull out the jar of mayonnaise from the fridge, whilst my mom emptied a couple of soup cans into a pot on the stove. Once the food was ready, we retreated back to my room and started the movie. The whole time it was playing, I remember thinking about how there was no way that it could be real. And she was there, sitting in my room, watching horror movies with me, of all people. If you were there, you would have constantly caught me sneaking glances at her as she was engrossed in the movie every chance I had. She groaned as she stood up off the floor and stretched her back. You are right. That was pretty good. She said, picking up a plate and following me back into the kitchen. Yeah, the horror sci-fi combinations usually aren't that scary, but they did a pretty good job on that one. Probably had something to do with Guillermo del Toro being all over the credits. She suggested as she rinsed the dishes off. Oh yeah, that was him, wasn't it? Makes sense now that I think about it. Well, see you tomorrow. She stayed casually as she headed to the front door. But tomorrow's Sunday. All right. Same time and same place then. She instructed before walking out and closing the door behind her. I stood there in shock for the longest time, considering the idea that I'd be spending two days in a row with Haley. Still all seemed like a dream that could end at any moment, but that didn't seem to be the case. Since the night passed, and come 2pm the next day, she was there in the same spot on the merry-go-round, singing that same song. Green gobs of greasy grimy gopher guts, mutilated monkey meat, dirty little birdie feet. French fried eyeball swimming in a pool of blood. Great green gobs of greasy grimy gopher guts, mutilated monkey meat, crushed up a parakeet, wormy vomit flowing down a filthy street. Purple pails of every color porpoise pus, mutilated monkey meat, sauteed skunk tails, always such a tasty treat. If only I had a spoon. What's that song? I asked her as I walked up behind her. It's really weird. My parents used to make me go to summer camp every year, before the divorce. I learned it there. Oh, I didn't know that, I said sheepishly. Camp or that my parents got divorced? She asked, leaning her head back to look at me. Yes. Emotionally clumsy. People find that endearing. She said in a usual flat tone. Do... You find it endearing? Have you watched Freddy vs. Jason yet? She suddenly asked before I could finish. Um, not yet. I was planning on waiting for it to come out on video. I told her. 
Thankfully, I didn't have to finish answering the question. Let's go see it then. It's still showing at the theater in the mall. She suggested pulling a piece of printed paper out of a bag with a bunch of showtimes on it. I would love to, but I don't think they'll let us buy tickets. It's an R-rated movie, and like, a hot R. So, you just buy a ticket to any other movie showing around that time, and go into the one you're actually there to see instead. It's not like they follow you around to make sure you go into the right screen. As long as you buy a ticket and a bunch of snacks, they don't really care. I never really thought about that. And sure, let's go, I relinquished. I was still apprehensive about sneaking into a movie, but Haley just asked me to go to a movie with her, and frankly at that time, you'd have had to break my legs to keep me from going. Two for a secondhand lion, please, said to the guy behind the ticket booth when we got there. Okay, we're in. You want any snacks? I asked as we walked inside. Um, I think I'll get some strawberry Twizzlers. One of my brothers eats them all the time, and now I kind of like them. She said as she examined the selection. But I can pay for them, I have money. No, no! I mean, the last couple of days have been the most fun I've had in a long time, so let me pay. As a thank you. Well, that's kind of sweet. And sad. But okay. If you say so. She gave up, stepping out of the way. I want a big popcorn with a lot of butter, I said as I thought about it. What do you want to drink, like a Coke or something? Just get one, we can share it. Oh, uh, one large Coke and a pack of Twizzlers, please. I finished before counting out some cash and putting it on the counter. By then, I couldn't hold back my grin. Something about ordering for her made me feel really grown up and sophisticated even if it was just some snacks at a movie theater. As the girl behind the counter walked back over to bring our stuff, she leaned close to me and whispered, First date? I don't really know. My mouth silently back to her with a quick shrug. Oh, I get it. Let me give you a little help. She said, give me a sly wink as she stood back up. Here you go. Enjoy. You guys are a really cute couple, by the way. She added before walking off, leaving me standing there staring eyes wide open, straight forward in a panic-stricken paralysis. Oh my god, I think I might actually pass out, I thought to myself, too afraid to even move an inch. Thank you, Haley said as she walked over and picked her candy up off the counter. You coming? She asked when I stood there like I was trying to blend into my surroundings. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, right. Let me just get this stuff. After I snapped out of it, I gathered everything up and we went looking for the right theater. Once we found it, we didn't have any trouble finding seats because there wasn't that many people watching a horror movie that had been out since August in the middle of a Sunday. So we picked what we figured were the best seats and sat down. Once the trailer started, I heard her start fumbling around with her candy wrapper and the squeak as she finally pulled it open. A few seconds later, she said, Want one? Sure, I answered, hesitating a second before looking down to take it from her. And when I did, a Twizzler went straight up my nose. Oh, sorry. I thought you were just going to take a bite. No, I thought I'd just pick one up and eat it. Speaking of, can we get the Twizzler out of my nose? I said, my voice a little weird from the candy being jammed up into my sinus. Here you go. She said as she pulled it out and held it to my mouth. You just took that up my nose. Now I'm supposed to take a bite right out of it? It was up your nose. What's the big deal? She asked, the Twizzler still hovering an inch away from my lips. Fine, here, she said, biting off the end and putting it back in my face. As gross as that was to me at the time, I wasn't about to let that stop me from taking a bite out of a piece she just bit off. Remember when that was a big deal? Because at that time, that was basically the same as making out compared to any previous experience I had with a girl. I can't believe you just did that. I said as I took my time chewing a piece of candy. It's okay. The spray paint has disguised the booger taste. She said as she continued to chew on her bite. 
to, to what? It's something my brother says. He always says they taste like spray paint smells. She told me as the trail is ended and the movie started to play. Oh, here it goes. She said as she pointed at the screen and got comfortable in a seat. Oh, hey, look. The armrests go up. She suddenly added as she pushed the one between us up and scooted over to me where we were shoulder to shoulder. Oh my god, what is even happening right now? I thought as my heart started to race. I have to thank that girl at the register when we leave. That was great. She said as we walked out into the lobby. I'm glad they set up a sequel at the end. Hope it doesn't take too long, but... But what? I asked as we stopped in front of the arcade area. It's still like all the rest anyway. She said, turning to look at the prizes in the claw machine. In what way? Have you ever noticed how they try to move through the slashers, killing the characters? How it seems like they just want to show the audience a few new ways for the villain to kill a few teenagers we don't really care about before the end of the movie? Huh, yeah, I guess. I just thought that's how those kind of movies worked, I admitted. Why? I was just thinking, it loses something after a while. Just killing them, I mean. People kill each other all the time, right? It's something that happens not all that far away from us every day. Not really that scary when you think about it. I think the ones that would be the scariest are the ones who don't want them to die. At least not right away. They'd be the ones who want them to live on in the worst way possible. After doing the most horrible things to them. Things they'd never get better from. I think I see what you mean. It does seem a lot worse, because after all, once they die, it's over. Even if it's a pretty gruesome death. Why don't you think there's more of that? Hmm. She stopped and thought for a second. I guess because it's not the way most people who write those stories can think. They think killing someone is the worst, most horrible thing you can do to them. They don't consider that people choose to die because of kind of small things all the time. Then you can make living the worst thing imaginable for a person if you tried. Like how? I asked out of morbid curiosity. Well, maybe take an athlete who was just about to get on the team they'd always dreamed of. That they spent all their life working towards and paralyzed them from the neck down. Make a rich man poor. Make a beautiful model hideous. Make a popular person hated by everyone around them. Ah, oh, yeah, I see what you mean. But that seems a little... involved for the movie slasher types. I don't see Jason or Michael Myers doing all that planning. Yeah, fair. But they could still do way more to someone than they do. The human body could probably deal with a lot before it gives out. If they slowed down, really put some effort into it, people wouldn't be as keen to watch them hurt those teenagers anymore. Most people, anyway. Make for a much better horror movie if you ask me, though. You're probably right, I admitted. So what are you looking at there? Hmm? Oh. This is where I got this keychain from, she told me holding up a bag so I could see the little voodoo doll hanging from it. But it's getting all worn out, and I don't think I brought enough money to win another one, trying to see if there's one that's easier to get than the rest. Oh? Yeah, move over. I rule at these things, I said, sliding some of the leftover chains from the movie into the machine. And there you go, I hummed a few seconds later placing the tiny doll keychain into her hands. Wow, that was quick, she said excitedly. How did you get so good at that? She went on as she unclipped the old one from her bag and slung it into the trash can before immediately attaching the new one. Thank you, she said as she evened out again and put her arms around me, giving me a quick hug. And from over her shoulder, I could see the girl at the snack counter smile and give me a big thumbs up. Tonight was fun, Haley said when we stopped out in front of her house later that night. 
after hanging out at the arcade and playing some games. And thanks for the keychain. Welcome. And yeah, tonight was pretty great. Thanks for asking me to go to the movie with you. I said back to her right before an uproar rose from her house. What the hell is that? I asked the model on. Ah, uh, my little brothers are fighting again. She groaned. I have to go. My mom isn't going to do anything. If she's even awake. She added as the sounds of the mechanic shop next door could be heard in the distance. Oh, okay. Good night. I told her she turned to walk inside. But before she got too far, she stopped, turned around and gave me a quick kiss on the cheek before running back to her house. See you tomorrow. She called from her front door before she closed it behind her. I basically floated the rest of the way back to my house after that. I had just gone on a real date with Haley and she kissed me on my cheek. Me. You out late tonight, Mom said as I walked through the front door. Was it your little lady friend? She asked with a smile that caused my cheeks to turn hot and bright red. Just went to the movies at the mall, chill. I answered as I drifted slowly towards the bathroom to take a shower before I went to bed. Okay, class. Before you all leave, you know Halloween is this Friday. So you can wear all your costumes that day within reason, Donna. No sexy anythings this year. You'll be sent home. And whether you're going to trick or treat on the streets, trunks or treats or whatever, please stay safe and pay attention. As you all know, a lot of pets have been going missing recently. So please be careful, everyone. And if you see anything suspicious, tell someone immediately. My teacher spoke to the class on Monday after the last bell rang. Once she was done, I turned to look at Haley, remembering the man from the gas station. But... Like she knew what I was thinking, she just shook her head. So I didn't say anything. I just picked up my backpack and followed her out of class. So what are you going as for Halloween? I asked when I caught up to her. I think I'm going to be Jack the Ripper. Solid choice. I don't know. I wasn't really planning on dressing up. I can think of something by then, though. She answered as we walked down the hall together. Your head still hurt? She suddenly asked someone, and I turned around to see Wesley. The whole left side of his face was all bruised and purple, still kind of swollen. But instead of saying anything, he just gave us a mean look and walked by. My jaw almost dropped open in amazement. Since he was known for never passing up a chance to screw with me at the drop of a hat, I guess Haley almost caving in his skull gave him some reservations about it. I still can't believe he hit him with a rock like that. That was crazy. It worked, didn't it? She said as she stopped at her locker and started messing with the lock. Technically, yes. So what about the man in the gas station? What if he had something to do with the missing pets? And nobody else knows he's there. I asked as she put some textbooks away. You really are crazy, I said to her that afternoon at the playground. Both of us sitting on the merry-go-round and watching for the man to show himself. If you're really worried about it, then we'll check for ourselves. If we find anything, then we'll tell someone about it, and they can take care of everything after that. But I don't think we will. Seems too obvious. But what if he catches us? Then you distract him and I'll hit him with a rock. The system works. She said, picking up another fist-sized rock off the ground. I don't think that's going to have the same effect on a full-grown man, I cautioned her, thinking that Wesley was just an asshole, but not that big or strong, and Haley had a pretty small frame herself. We'll make it work. Besides, we'll be in and out real fast before he gets back. Look, there he goes. Okay, come on. She instructed as she crept that way once he was out of sight. Wow, it's nasty in here. What's that smell? I complained as we eased in through the doors. After taking a few sniffs of the air, she turned and looked at me and said grimly, Something dead. What does that mean? There's something dead in here. Dead and rotting. She repeated, easing further into the dark building. Hey, look over here. 
she said, pointing to a cluster of stuff in the far corner. What is that? Naya squinted to see further back. Looks like an old mattress and a bunch of garbage. Let's go see if we can find anything. God, I hope I wasn't right about this. I sighed as we inched closer to the filthy trash-covered bed. As I got there, I looked around and saw a bunch of empty cans and bottles and dirty rags all over the place. Some old unwashed silverware, crusty milk crates with various objects scattered across the tops of them like an old oil lamp, and a few random tools. While I scanned over the debris, I could tell the smell was way worse near the mattress. Hey, look over here, Haley said, waving me over to where she was in the corner. What is- Oh my god, the smell is worse over here! I groaned when I walked over and the odor hit me. Look, she said, pointing at an area in the corner. What is that? Are those bones? Yeah, and organs and stuff. I think we need to go now. She insisted as I stared down at the long, pale bone, about as long as a girl's arm would have been, still partially caked with gore. That was... unexpected. She huffed after we ran all the way back to my house. Well, I, I guess we should send in a tip or something? I suggested once we were safe in my room. The anonymous tip indicated that a local vagrant had been taking shelter in an abandoned convenience store, and that there appeared to be dead, butchered animals located inside that may possibly be the remains of missing pets from the area. Concerned, local police were dispatched to investigate the tip. The findings were that the remains belonged exclusively to wild animals such as deer, presumed to be harvested from roadkill the man had been using for food. Needless to say, we here at the news station are all disheartened that we still haven't found an explanation for those lost pets. In other news, We're both idiots, I said to Haley after I switched off the local news the following Wednesday. Well, at least we tried. But he's probably not happy that we narked him out and got kicked out of his gas station. Keeps getting better. I sighed, pulling the bagel bites out of the oven that we had been heating up whilst we were waiting on the evening news to start. So what are we going to watch today? She asked once we were back in my room. How about... Have you ever seen Misery? No. What is it? She asked, looking at the box. It's Stephen King, I think. One of those that scares you with the idea behind it I was talking about. Came out the year we were born, I told her. And it's kind of like what you said at the movies that night, about something worse than just killing someone. Okay, that's fine. Let's watch that. She decided before walking over to what had become her usual spot on the floor in front of my TV and sat down. Once the movie was in and playing, she sat there for a second before yawning and laying ahead on my leg, using it like a pillow. That was it. That's what I always imagined every time I thought about her in class. Every time I wanted to walk over and talk to her, but didn't. I couldn't imagine ever being happier than I was right then and there. So we sat there and watched horror movies together. Hey, you got the keychain on your wrist, I said when I noticed it hanging from a string. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to have it even when I didn't have my backpack on, she said, poking at the tiny voodoo doll. I like it. Once the movie was over, she stood up with a big stretch like she always did and asked, So you like that one, huh? Oh yeah, sure. Kathy Bates was awesome in there. She's a scarier villain to me than Freddy or Jason or any of them. She just seems so real. I answered as I stood up after her. What about you? I think what you said is about right. She seems... real. You have a good taste in books and movies. Are you excited about Halloween tomorrow? Haley asked at the school the next day. I decided I'm going to be a witch, since it's pretty easy to do last minute. Yeah, I've been working on my Jack costume for a while now. Did you have any plans? I thought we could hang out some more. Trick or treat a little if you want to. Walk around and look at costumes and decorations for a while. She suggested with a rare smile. Yeah, that actually sounds nice. I answered. But are you okay? 
You look tired. Er than usual. Yeah, I was up late last night. I'm fine. But I think I'm gonna go straight home today and get some rest before tomorrow. Oh, okay. I said a little disappointed, but I understood. She'd been at my house every day for almost a week. So I didn't complain and just knew I had Friday to look forward to. The next day I saw Haley as I walked into the classroom. A black, oversized witch's hat resting on her head. She turned to look at me with a rejuvenated look on her face that made me smile. Wow, that's cute, I thought to myself as I couldn't help but stare. I like your costume. She complimented me as I sat down at my desk. The top hat is really cool. Thanks, I like your hat too. I noticed, she said with a grin, apparently having noticed my gawking at her as I walked in. You ready? She asked as she stood over me at my desk once the bell rang. Yep, let's go, I answered excitedly, shooting out of my seat. What do you want to do first? Mm, let's go see the festival at the park. Okay, I agreed. But let's go to my house before that. My mom said she'd make us something to eat before we start doing Halloween stuff. Do you like sloppy joes? My mom asked Haley as we sat at the kitchen table. I love them, she answered happily her feet swinging from the chair. Okay, then I'll make some of those with french fries. You two look so cute in your witch and wizard costumes. He's not a wizard, he's Jack the Ripper. Haley corrected her as she adjusted her hat. Oh, hmm. My mom grumbled quietly to herself as she fished the hamburger meat out of the fridge. Once we were done eating, Haley almost couldn't wait to get out the door into the festival. So we put our plates up and made a run for the door. But before we could get there, my mom stopped us. Hey, you two, she said, causing us both to slide to a stop. Before you go, no funny business and please be careful out there. Stay in crowded places where people can see you, okay? We both nervously turned and looked at each other once my mom had finished talking and walked back into the living room. Funny business? I think she means sex. Jesus! <coughs> I coughed in surprise from accidentally inhaling my own spit. What? I called after her as she started slow jogging down the walkway through the front yard. Hey, what? Hey, look at this. Haley called over to me, waving me towards a booth at the festival. It's like a catapult, and you have to get the severed head into the rotating pots. That's gross. Want to try it? Yes. She shouted excitedly. Hold my hat. She told me as she took a witch's head off to focus. I can't believe you got it first try. I sighed as I walked behind her as she carried the stuffed bat in her arms with a faint look of accomplishment on her face. Once we left the festival, we wandered around for a while, looking at decorations and people's costumes, and Haley suddenly stopped and said, Hey, Come with me, before taking my hand and leading me away. Where are we going? I asked as she led me along behind her. Somewhere private, she answered, making me nervously think back to what my mom said about funny business. But where, though? I said insistently. You'll see, she told me. And after some time, we were walking through the trees before we merged on the other side of an old, ruinous building that looked like it might have been a factory in its prime. What is this place? It's kind of creepy. I said as we exited the path of trees and my feet landed on a slab of concrete. I'm not sure, but I don't think most people know it's even here. It's neat, right? She asked as she stopped to look at me. Scared? What? No, but are you sure it's safe and won't, like, suddenly collapse on us or something? It's fine. I come here all the time. It's all metal on the inside, so it's pretty sturdy, she said. Come on, you have to see this. Actually, wait, she said, coming to a stop suddenly. You have to promise to keep this a secret, okay? Oh, yeah, sure, I promise. I said without thinking. Okay, good. Don't forget. 
She told me before leading me around to an old rusted door that had been left ajar. This way, she said, waving me over before disappearing into the entrance, her unusually long black hair trailing behind her like a tail. It's dark in here. I can't see, I said as I tripped over something metal on the ground, sending it sliding loudly across the floor. Here, she said back, taking a flashlight out of a backpack. Try not to fall. There's old tools and junk all over the place. She instructed, leading me deeper into the dark old building. Where are we going? I asked, stumbling over something else on the floor. It's just up here a little farther. As I took a few more clumsy steps, I stopped. Hey, did you hear that? I asked as she continued on ahead of me. Hear what? She asked once she stopped. Never mind. It must have just been my head. I told her as I kept moving to try and catch back up. Here we are, she said as she finally stopped. Near what I assumed was the far side of the building after we had gone through several cramped and cluttered hallways to get where we were. Ready? She asked excitedly. Ready for what? I asked, but she didn't answer. Okay, yeah, sure, ready. She pushed an old cardboard box to the side to reveal a sliding metal door. Then she grabbed a handle and gave it a pull, opening the door to an even smaller hidden room. It looks like it used to be a tool room, she told me as we walked inside. I come here when my brothers get on my nerves. You're the only one who knows about it. Oh, really? I asked as I looked around the small place. Mm-hmm. She answered as she fiddled with something near the other side of the room. After a few seconds, something clicked and a dim light from an electric lantern washed over the room, illuminating the piles and piles of old tools and shelves and boxes and random collections of things. See? All kinds of neat stuff in here. And it's quiet. She said as we sat down on an old plastic milk crate. This is pretty cool. So, what are you doing here? I asked, picking through one of the stacks of tools. Read, mostly. She answered, taking her witch hat off and sitting it on a wooden workbench. Sometimes other stuff. Other stuff? What's that mean? I asked her, turning to face her. Hmm. She said, thinking for a second. Stuff you usually need privacy to do. You do that kind of stuff too, don't you? She asked, the grin still on her face as she leaned forward and rested her cheek against her hand. Well, I, uh, I mean, why do you ask? Don't change the subject. Do you? She asked again. I, I guess so, I mumbled. <laughs> she said softly in triumph. Okay, so who do you think about when you do it? When she asked me that, I felt my face start to burn red hot as the embarrassment hit me and my eyes shot straight to the floor, trying to keep from making eye contact with her. And I felt my whole body tense up when I heard her say, Oh, I think I get it. What? Get what? I croaked as she stood up from her seat on the crate and started to walk towards me. Hey, hey! I shouted as I started to panic. Is this how you imagined it? She casually asked when she reached me. Well, not, not, I mean, I didn't. Leave me alone, I pouted, knowing she had me figured out. It's fine, everyone does it. She said as she circled around me like a shark. If you say so, I sighed as I gave up my final attempt at denial. I guess it's different from person to person, but here... Maybe this will get you through next time, she said before I felt her lips suddenly press against mine and the tip of her tongue brush across mine as she pulled away, leaving me standing there in stunned disbelief. Come on, let's get back to the festival before everything closes down. There's still some stuff I want to do, she told me as she grabbed my hand and pulled me along behind her. I couldn't imagine it would have been very difficult for her since at the time was probably floating several inches off the ground.
Once we left the building, we hurried back to the festival and continued the night's activities. But I now had a smile that wouldn't... couldn't leave my face. Until... Ah, oh, my hat! Haley suddenly said. I forgot my hat. Oh yeah, I didn't even notice. I said back, a little shocked that I hadn't noticed it either. Don't worry, I'll go get it. It's easy for me to run in this anyway. I told her, pointing out that her dress would mean she'd have to walk the whole way there and back. Are you sure? You don't have to. It's my fault. Nah, it's okay. Just play some more games or something for a while. It'll only take a few minutes anyway. I answered, puffing my chest out a little. Okay, I'll stay in this area so you can find me when you get back. It didn't take me long to get there, but when I walked back inside, it felt even creepier than before. I guess because I was alone. But every tiny shift and noise seemed even louder and more obvious as I inched my way through the dark building. By the time I found the hat, still resting on the table in the hidden room, I couldn't get out fast enough. The strange environment of the twisted and jagged structures of buildings only helped the chills run down my back as I tripped and stumbled over the unseen junk strewn across the floor. Why would anyone hang out in a creepy place like that? I thought to myself once I finally made it back outside and was on my way back to the fair. I was a little relieved when I could finally see the lights in the distance, so I sped up, excited to be back with Haley again. But when I found her sitting on a bench, she wasn't alone. Donna, another girl from our class, and a few of the girls she hung out with were sitting with her. Since they were facing away, they didn't see me as I walked up behind them. And that's when I could make out what Donna was saying. I can't believe you're actually in public outside of school, I heard her say. Hey, look at me weirdo. What are you doing out about like normal people anyway? When I realized what she was saying, I stopped, waiting to see what she would do thinking back to what she did to Wesley with the rock. But, unexpectedly, she just sat there perfectly still, wanting to say something. But not being a remotely confrontational kid, I just stood there quietly until Donna finally stood up and walked away, her friends following close behind. Hey, what was that about? I asked as I sat down beside Haley and gave her a hat. But she didn't say anything. She just sat there, running her hands over the black witch hat, sitting in her lap. You okay? There was still no answer. She just kept looking down as I noticed the tiniest glimmer of light as a teardrop ran down her cheek. Um, hey, why don't we go home and watch some scary movies? I asked, standing up from the bench. I think that's a pretty good Halloween activity, just as much as this is. She still didn't say anything. But she did give a soft nod and slowly stood up beside me. So, does Donna say stuff like that often? I asked if we sat in our usual places, American Psycho playing on the screen in front of us. Her still not having said a single word. I guess, but only when she thinks there's nobody around to hear except her friends. She finally answered. Well, why don't you just, you know, blast her in the head with a rock like you did to Wesley? She'd probably leave you alone then. It's not the same. No, shh. I like this movie. I know, that's why I picked it. I told her as she got situated with the glass of chocolate milk I made for her to help her relax. You sure you don't want to talk about it? Yes. She sighed before pulling a blanket off the bed and wrapping herself in it. Now shh, he's about to kill Paul. I really like this part. This and the business card scenes are my favorite. So I gave up asking her about it and just watched the movie. As the movie played, I'd occasionally glance over at her. When I did, I couldn't help but notice how engrossed she was. She really was a horror fanatic. I don't think a lot of people actually even know what the word fan is. It's just short for fanatic. But somehow, they've come to mean two different things. Like, if you're a fan of something, then you're just into it. You like it enough to give it a lot of attention. But if you're a fanatic, that means you're almost obsessed with something. It occupies a large portion of your time, energy, and thought. And Haley, 
She was a horror fanatic, like I was. I smiled a little as I thought about it. That the girl I'd had a secret crush on for so long happened to be in the same things I was. What? She asked when she suddenly turned and caught me staring at her. What? Nothing! I said, absolutely embarrassed for getting caught. I just... Nothing. Well, no, I mean... You know, I... I like you, right? I mean, I've had a crush on you for like... Ever. Mm-hmm. I noticed. You've never been really good at hiding it. She said, her eyes still on the screen. I wanted to talk to you too. But I couldn't work up the courage until I saw that book in your backpack and realized we liked the same kind of stuff. Wait, seriously? You knew this whole time? Kinda. At first I thought you might be staring at me because you thought I was weird. Or you weren't all there or something. But before long I figured it out. Oh. And you still want to hang out with me? Obviously. She answered, still fixated on Patrick Bateman's antics. Okay, so... Do you want to, like... Um... Okay, this is kind of hard. Date? Like, for real? Huh? She asked, finally taking her eyes off the screen to face me. What do you mean? I thought that's what we were doing. What's got you so happy? My mom asked once Haley had left and I closed the door behind her. Oh, I said, surprised that she'd been standing right behind me. I, I guess me and Haley are dating now. Oh, I thought you already were, she said with a shrug before walking into the living room. We don't need to have the talk, do we? You know, condoms, STDs and all that. Oh God, no, please never say any of those things loud to me ever again. I groaned. What's the big deal? You think a stork dropped you on the doorstep? Or that your mom forgot she didn't take a pill so your dad thought it was okay to- I will give you all my Halloween candy if you just don't finish that sentence. So what do you think happened to the homeless guy? I asked Haley one day when the thought occurred to me. I haven't seen him since... Well, you know. Hmm, I don't know. I guess he found somewhere else to stay besides the gas station? She answered as we walked by the old playground. You still look pretty sketchy if you ask me, I said looking back at the now boarded up building. Hmm, you might be onto something, especially since you decided to hang out so close to a school near a bunch of kids, she added as she stopped to think. Maybe we actually did something good, running him off before he could do anything. Yeah, and the pets stopped going missing after that too, I noticed. I told her, stopping to stand next to her. We should keep a lookout for him just in case. She said as she started walking again. After that, Thanksgiving came and went. Haley even came over to my house for Thanksgiving dinner. We'd spent almost every day together and you'd hardly see one of us without the other close by. And before long, Christmas was on its way. I remember being in a panic over what to get her as a gift. I was sitting at the computer looking for ideas on the internet when she walked through the front door, making me fumble to switch the screen off before she could see what was on it. Finally caught you looking at dirty stuff, didn't I? She asked as she closed the door behind her, looking a little more pale than usual. Have you seen the news yet? What? No, why? I asked back. What's going on? What's with the band-aid? I questioned, pointing at her arm. Oh... I donated blood before I came over, and don't worry about it. Here, look, the story should probably be going. She said as she turned the TV on and turned to the right channel. A local family's Christmas has been stricken with tragedy as their daughter's sudden disappearance weighs heavily in their hearts. Local authorities have begun to organize a search party to bring the young girl home to her parents. We'll be back with more coverage after these commercials. Who is it? I asked once the news went off. I missed who it was. We'll have to watch it until they say again, she told me, sitting the remote down on the couch. So we sat down in front of the TV and watched until the news came back on. And after a few car and potato chip commercials, it finally started. 
and both leaned forward as the news person began to speak. As of right now, there are no concrete explanations for the disappearance of Donna Barr, who was reported missing late last night. But currently, the police are encouraging the family and the public to remain optimistic as to her safe return. Oh, shit. I said as me and Haley turned to face each other. What do you think happened? I'm not sure. But if I had to guess... She probably ran away with some older guy she met in a chat room or something. You hear about it all the time. They usually show back up pregnant a few months later, she explained. She used to talk about running away all the time when we were little. When you were little? Did you two used to be friends or something? Mm-hmm. Long time ago. But then, when I started getting into monsters and horror and stuff... She started doing cheerleading and hanging out with other popular kids. She started calling me names, and then we just stopped being friends. Oh, I see now. So you're really not worried about her? I questioned as she sat there watching the news intently. No. This isn't that bad of an area. She probably just ran away. Whatever happens to her after that is kind of her own fault. I guess you're right. I said, turning to watch the news with her. Still right before Christmas. That reminds me. You want to go see Bad Santa? It looks good. You sure? You never said anything about a movie that wasn't a horror movie. I know. But it looks like it's supposed to be the dark kind of humor. I like that stuff too. And it's a Christmas movie. There aren't too many Christmas movies like that. I'm curious. Sure, let's go. I'll go get my jacket. Hey, what are you up to? My mom asked as she passed us on our way to the door. We're going to see a movie. I answered, pulling my coat up around my shoulders. We'll be back soon. Okay, but be careful and stay together. You know one of those little girls from your school went missing? She told me as I walked outside. I know, I said as I waved aimlessly behind me. No, it's okay, I'll pay for this time, since it was my idea. Haley told me as I took my wallet out to pay for the tickets. You sure it's not a big deal? I asked, still holding my wallet halfway out of my pocket. Yeah, it's fine, I promise. Put your money away. So I did, but I couldn't help but feel a little bad, since I knew she rarely had that much money. And I wasn't a fan of her spending it on me like that. So I decided I'd have to get us something really good for Christmas to make up for it. Once we were finally in the theater and the movie started, she pushed the armrest back up, like last time, and scooted up next to me. Which I didn't hate. Want a Twizzler? She asked, holding one up to my face. Sure, just don't stick it up my nose like last time. Please? You got me. She sighed as she suddenly stopped and redirected it towards my mouth. Jeez, you're right, this is kind of dark. He just pissed all over himself in front of those kids? I said as the movie played on the screen. Told you. I don't get it. I told her once the movie had been playing for a while. They've said something about not shitting right for a week twice now. What's the deal? She paused for a second before answering, apparently baffled by my naivete. Yeah... Some people do sex stuff with their butts, and it's supposed to hurt when they do. How do you even know that? The internet. She answered, chewing on another Twizzler. What the hell are you doing on the internet? Probably the same thing you were when I walked in earlier. She replied with a little smirk. I wasn't doing that! I argued with a hiss. I was looking for your... Never mind. That was pretty good, I said as we walked out of the theater when it was over. Willie kind of reminds me of you a little. What now? Like when he beat those skater kids up for bullying the boy. I mean, a grown man assaulting a bunch of children aside, I explained. It's like what you did with Wesley that one day. It was really nice. In a dark kind of way. Oh, that makes sense, I guess. So what do you want for Christmas? She suddenly asked me. I haven't actually thought about it. I was more worried about what to get you. Never had a girlfriend before. 
especially one on Christmas. So I want to get it right, I told her. Do you know what you want? Hmm, I'm not sure. I'm pretty happy with what I have now. She said as she reached out to hold my hand, causing a wave of happy jitters to wash over me. That was really corny, but thank you. I think I have everything I want, too. Ugh, I still don't know what I want to get her! I groaned as I sat at the computer, still looking for ideas. And then, as I was looking through the horror movie-related things that she might like, I happened across a website for a store. They sold props that were used in movies, and some of it wasn't that expensive either. As I scrolled down the listings, there it was. Something I could afford from one of her favorite movies. And have to use all of my money, and had to hurry if I wanted to get it by Christmas. But I could do it. Mom! I called into the living room. I need to order something online! I said as I started counting out my cash. Oh, hi. You sure? That's a lot of money for... Yes, I'm sure. I told her as I handed her my money, and she passed me a card for use on the order. If you say so. Why do you want it, though? She asked as she watched me fill out the online form. It's for Haley. It's from one of her favorite movies. Aw, that's really sweet. She said from over my shoulder as I placed the order. Where are you going? She asked as I shot up and ran past her when I was done. To call Haley until I finally got her a present. I answered as I reached the phone hanging in the kitchen. Hello? Who's this? A young boy's voice asked from the other end of the phone. My mom's pet. My mom's asleep right now. Oh, uh, no, I'm calling to talk to Haley. I answered as I heard another boy's voice from the background. Who's on the phone? You just killed my internet connection. I've been waiting for like two hours on that download. She's not here right now. Oh, wait, never mind. She just walked in. Here, phone. I heard the boy say before he passed the phone off to her. Hello? He said once she had it. Hey, it's me, I said excitedly. Guess what? I found you the coolest Christmas present. What is it? Tell me. No, I want it to be a surprise for you on Christmas. No spoilers. I said proudly, patting myself on the back for thinking of something so good. The next day I was walking home by myself from the convenience store with a drink and a snack I bought with some of the money I had left. While I walked, all I could think about was seeing Haley's face when she opened her present on Christmas Day. I felt butterflies in my stomach every time I imagined it. And then, out of nowhere, I was falling face first towards the ground. I looked straight ahead as my drink busted against the ground and spewed everywhere. And then... Girlfriend's not around to save you this time, is she, dickhole? Wesley's voice said from behind me as I rolled over to face him. And there he was, standing over me with the nastiest look in his eyes. Then I looked over and saw the large rock he had in his hand. Please don't, Wesley, please. You want me to beg you? I'll beg. You can have the rest of my money if you want. Just... I tried to plead, but before I knew it, he put down his foot on my chest and twisted it hard. All I could do was scream as it pulled and tugged at my skin under my shirt. Then, before he took off his foot, he gave a hard stomp for good measure, knocking all the wind out of me. Hold still. He warned me as he drew his arm back, ready to sling the rock down into me. What are you doing over there? A gruff voice called out from across the street. I turned my head, one eye still closed tight, and saw the homeless guy walking our way. Then, slowly... Wesley's arm lowered down to his side as the man got closer to us. I said, what is all this? He asked in an ominous tone. You like to play rough, do you, son? He asked Wesley, eyeing him up and down. How about you come play with me for a while? I'll kill you with that real quick. Fuck you, you old pervert! Wesley shouted at the man as he turned and walked off, dropping the rock behind him as he went. Let me catch you out here again and see what happens. He yelled at me before he's too far away to hear. You planning to lay there and stare at me all day? The man asked, looking down at me. Hey, do I know you from somewhere? He added, his putrid breath pouring into my nostrils as he spoke. 
No, no, I don't think so. I wheezed before stumbling to my feet and frantically running away back to home, still struggling to catch my breath from being stomped in the chest. I'll see you around then, he called after me. Have you a Merry Christmas, you hear? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Haley begged over and over again that night when she came over to eat dinner with me and my parents. My dad was a truck driver, so he was away a lot of the time and hadn't had a chance to meet Haley yet, so I was excited to introduce them. But as I sat there with my mom and Haley, his place at the table was empty as usual. He called at the last minute to let us know he wouldn't be able to make it back in time for dinner. Or Christmas. And when Haley saw the disappointed look on my face, that's when she started bugging me about her present. I think she was doing it to distract me so I wouldn't think about it too much. And then I guess it kind of worked. So, do you know what you're getting him yet? My mom asked Haley as she took the plate from the table and carried it over to the sink. I do, she said with a little bounce in her seat. It's really cool. After dinner, we sat down like we always did to watch a movie together. We couldn't pick which one, so we decided on Scary Movie 2, thinking it was basically like watching several movies at once, and at the time, she'd only seen the first one. I want the foul mouth parrots so, so bad. She said when the movie ended, as we were both on our way to the kitchen, then we both tried to walk around the corner at the same time and we ran into each other. She tried to walk around me with the cup of orange juice she was drinking, but as she did, she bumped into me and some splashed on my shirt. Oh, sorry, she apologized. It's okay, let me just go get another, I told her. All mine just got done drying, so it's fine. I can just throw it in the wash and put another one on, no big deal. Oh, okay. Uh, what are you doing? You scared me! I almost shrieked as I pulled my wet shirt on my head when I could see she was standing in front of me. I said I'd be right back. I guess I just wanted to see you with your shirt off. I was curious. Sue me. Hey, what's that? She suddenly asked, her eyes fixated on my chest, and the huge dark bruise in the middle of it. Oh, um, well, Wesley caught up with me whilst I was outside today, and... You know how it is. For the longest time, she didn't say anything. She just stood there, eyes locked on my side, like she was trying to imagine what happened. And then, suddenly, Are you okay? She asked, intention vanishing all at once as she spoke. Yeah, it's whatever, I'm used to it by now, I told her, waving it off and putting on a fresh shirt. Uh-huh. Okay, then. Well, I've got to go home. See you tomorrow? She told me as she closed the door behind her. But a few seconds later, the door flew back open and she came running back inside and kissed me hard right on the lips. After that, she took back off, leaving the door standing open this time. You okay? My mom asked when she heard the commotion. Are you getting sick? Your face is all red and you're sweating. What's wrong? Haley asked the next day when she walked into the house and saw me watching the evening news. They found Donna. Kinda. They told her she stood beside me. She's dead. What? Where? She asked, turning up the volume. What are they saying? I think they said they found a body behind the gas station. They have haven't said much yet, but from the tone... It must have been bad. Like, really bad. But I think they said they already had a suspect. Who is it? They didn't say, but I think you know. I told her as she sat down on the couch beside me. You know, I ran into him yesterday. He was there when Wesley was, you know. I didn't. You really think it was him? It almost has to be. I mean, they found her behind the gas station where he was staying. I said, looking at the same direction she was towards the TV, hanging on their every word. We should probably be careful until they figure this out, she said once the news went off. Yeah, you're probably right, I agreed. I'm going to call my cousin and see if he'd tell me anything. He's a cop and he might know something about it. Oh, okay, she said, following me to the kitchen phone. Well, 
his side once I got off the phone with my cousin. He said they aren't supposed to tell the public about a lot of the details yet, but he said that since some random kids found the body, we'd probably hear about it before long anyway. We can't tell anyone else. Okay, so what they say? Okay. Here goes. They said they found a nail to the shack behind the store. Oh wow, really? Yeah, but that's not the worst part, I told her taking a pause to collect myself. He said she'd been tortured, like really bad too. He said she had her stomach cut open and stapled back together with medical staples, like from those things they use to close people up after surgery. And from what it looks like, the killer put a tube like from a bicycle wheel in there before they closed her up, probably to inflate it whilst it was inside her. Oh my god. Haley said with an alarmed look on her face, her eyes getting wider and wider with every word. It's still not everything, though. It gets worse. How could it? She asked nervously. Was she... you know? No, I don't think so, but... Well, all the skin had been peeled off her back and spread out like wings, nailed to the wall of the shack. And he said she had words cut into her. Something from the Bible? Be not afraid. Something angels say in the Bible. He says they don't know why it was done. I explained the grim words occasionally hanging in my throat as I spoke. So, are you excited about Christmas? It's only two days away now. Haley asked later that night as we sat huddled under a blanket in our usual places at the foot of my bed, scenes of Christmas vacation flickering across the screen in front of us. Yeah, I think so. It still feels weird with everything that happened. I guess she didn't run away after all. Well, she still might have, you know. Running away just doesn't always work out. Oh, wait, wait. He's about to say it. She diverted as her favorite line from the movie came up. Every time Catherine wrapped up the microwave, I'd piss my pants and forget who I was for half an hour or so. She quoted a line as Cousin Eddie spoke. Nah, good stuff. She said with a sigh. You were right. This really did help take my mind off of it. I had a feeling it might, I told her as she leaned her head against my shoulder. Tell me. She softly begged again with a nudge from her shoulder. Nope, you have to wait. Sweetie, Haley's here. Mom called to me on Christmas Day as she looked out through the kitchen window that faced the street. What the hell is the girl doing? Huh, what? A call back to her. She's got some boy helping her carry this huge box down the sidewalk. She answered, still looking out from the window. She's definitely unique. It's probably one of her brothers. What do you mean by a huge box? How huge? You could probably fit three of you in it at once, huge. She said as she walked over to the door to let her in. Hey, come help us with this stupid thing. Haley shouted from the sidewalk. Can I go now? I heard one of her brothers ask from behind her. I could never tell them apart by their voice since they were pretty much the exact same. Yeah, fine, we'll get it, she answered, shooing him away and trying to wiggle the giant Christmas wrap package through the frame of the door. Oh my god, what is that? I asked nervously, wondering what could possibly need such a massive box to hold it. She didn't answer. She just grinned as she slid it across the carpet and into the living room. This seems... You go first. She enthusiastically interrupted me, shoving me up to the box that she'd laid down on its side for some reason. I don't know what's happening here. Explain, I said as she nudged me closer. Just do it. You'll figure it out. Ah, uh, okay, here it goes, I guess. I sighed as I got down on my knees and opened the part that she made sure was facing me. What the? I said under my breath as I pulled the flaps open and saw a wall of balled up newspapers. Um... Haley, what a... What's this supposed to be exactly? Dick, she answered, 
now almost down on her hands and knees, watching me intently with a big smile on her face. Oh, okay, I said as I started scooping the newspapers out as I tunneled inside. Oh, hey, there's something in here. Hey, there's another thing. And another. Holy crap, there's presents buried in all the paper. Yep, my papa used to do this when he was still alive, she declared proudly. Keep going. That was so much fun. I told her once I had dug all the way to the back and was sitting in a kind of nest of newspaper balls. She had hidden a bunch of monster and horror stuff all throughout the inside of the box for me to find. Thank you, I added, wrapping my arms around her to give her a hug. Now? It's my turn, she said, almost coming off the floor. Yep, it's your turn, I mimicked with a grin, passing her the much, much smaller box. At first, when she opened it, she seemed a little confused by what she was looking at, because I'd left a certificate of authenticity on the top, so all she saw was a sheet of white paper, but then she took it out and saw what was lying underneath it. Then you could almost see her eyes glow with excitement as she picked the small plastic protective case out of the package. This is... it's really... Patrick Bateman's business card from the scene in American Psycho. The actual one from the movie they used on screen. I brat puffing my chest out a little. Oh my god, thank you. She squealed, jumping on top of me. Huh, I guess you were right. My mom admitted when she saw her reaction. Definitely, definitely unique. Where did you even find this? She asked later that day as she held the card in her hands, looking it over for the thousandth time. Oh, here. I answered, handing her a store business card that came with it. Some place called Hollywood Antiques that sells movie props and stuff like that, I explained. But this was probably so expensive, she said as she continued to flip it through her fingers. Not as bad as you think, I assured her dismissively. And it was so worth it to see your face when you opened it. Oh, thank you. I love it. And I still have one more present for you. But you have to wait a little longer, she told me, almost in a whisper that made it a little suspicious. What does that mean? Like you ordered it and it didn't get here in time? Nah, you'll see later, she answered cryptically with a little shake of her head. Oh, well, okay then. I wonder what she meant by that, I thought to myself later that night, after she went home for a little while. As I laid back on my bed, looking across the room at the new icons of horror poster hanging on the wall, Haley had put it in the giant Christmas box. I jumped as I heard a sudden pss, pss, from my bedroom door. Haley, oh my god, you just scared me so bad. I sat as I laid my head back down on the pillow, waiting for my heart to slow down. What? Why are you whispering? Shh, come on, your mom's asleep. She said, waving me in her direction. Hurry up. Hurry and what? I asked quietly as I walked over to her. Still not sure why she was whispering, but I still felt like I should whisper as long as she was. Come on. I have to take you to where your other... present is. She said as she pulled me along behind her to the front door. What? Why can't you give it to me here? I asked, trying to resist her strange activity a little. You'll understand when we get there. Now come on before I change my mind, she warned. Change it? Okay, whatever. Let's just hurry up so we can go back home before we get in trouble, I relinquished, following along as we passed by the TV that was still on in the living room. The late night news was on, and at the time I heard something I couldn't quite make out at first, so I just ignored it and quietly followed Haley outside. Where are we going? I asked once we were at safe distance from the house. Just follow me, she repeated as she led me along in the dark. You know, I really don't think this is a super good idea with everything that's going on. Seems a little bit unnecessarily dangerous to me. He'll be fine. There's nobody else out this late on Christmas. I can think of a few people who might be, I said to myself mostly. Before long, we were standing outside the old building she took me to on Halloween. I hadn't thought about it at all that much since then, but suddenly there we were, 
standing at the entrance again on a freezing cold Christmas night. Come on, in here, she instructed, handing me a flashlight this time as she led the way inside. As I followed her, I started thinking back to the first time we were in here, shining my light on the ground in front of me as I walked. Then, as I opened my mouth to speak, something caught my attention. Hey, you hear that? I asked, stopping in my tracks and shining a light behind me. Huh? I didn't hear anything. Now come on, she said without so much as a pause. Soon we were headed down the hall that led to the secret room towards the back of the building. And then suddenly, she stopped and turned to face me, aiming her flashlight right at my face before she spoke. Now, you have to promise not to tell anyone. It has to be our secret. You have to promise. She pressed as seriously as I'd ever heard her speak. Do you? I don't get what you're saying. What kind of present would I have to promise not to tell anyone about? And then I remember the first time we came to the back room together. And what she said about being alone. I, uh, I think maybe you should at least give me some kind of idea what I'm promising to keep secret before I promise not to tell. Can't, she said bluntly, giving her head a quick shake. You just have to promise. Yeah, okay, fine. I surrendered. So what is it? No, you have to say it. Say you promise. Uh, okay, I promise I won't tell anyone, I said with a sigh. Cross your heart, hope to die? Yes, cross my heart, hope to die. Now what? I started to say, but suddenly a loud racket broke the silence behind me, like something metal getting thrown across the concrete floor. What was that? I asked before I turned back to face Haley, but when I did, she was gone, vanished into the dark without a trace. By then, my heart was starting to race as I whipped the flashlight around, trying to find the source of the noise. And then I heard it in the distance, the sound of heavy booted footsteps, footsteps that rapped against the floor just before a face entered the edge of the light at the far end of the hall. The homeless man was slowly getting closer and closer to me as I stood there in the narrow corridor, paralyzed with fear. What are you doing in here all alone, boy? He called down to me in that old raspy voice. And before long, he was close enough to where I could see his eyes and look into them as they looked into mine. I, 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 uh... I tried to say, but my voice barely made it past my lips as I started to tremble in terror. Come on over here. It's dangerous in these old buildings, especially for little boys like you. Come on now. He said, trying to wave me over to him, and his toothy, rotten grin. <laughs> Haley, where'd you go? I whimpered as he got closer and closer and closer, and before long he was only a few feet away, close enough to reach out and grab me if he tried. I stole a quick glance over my shoulder at the hidden room down the end of the hall, thinking I might be safe if I could get there and barricade myself inside, but he noticed. Don't you run for me now, boy. Don't you do it. Oh, you come over here. Don't make me ask again. And then he took another step. He sent me into full sprint down the hall towards the back room. But the time it took me to turn around before I ran gave him enough of a head start I could hear him just behind me. Hey now, stop that! He yelled as he chased me through the dark building as I made my desperate dash for safety. Listen, kid! He started to say before I crashed through the stack of boxes that had been concealing the room. I tumble over the clutter, man close behind me, stumbling over the boxes and his own feet as we both hit the floor. I felt the flashlight leave my hand and heard the sound of it skipping across the concrete as I struck my arms out to break my fall, jamming my wrist in the process. Ah, ah, ah! I groaned as I grabbed my arm and used my legs to push myself back away from the man and towards the far wall. Wait, just wait! I begged as I pulled myself up from the ground. As he collected himself... I used my good hand to feel for the light that I could only tell was on the floor somewhere beside me. Boy, just what the hell are you talking about? Have you lost your goddamn mind? He asked as he walked towards me, wheezing in an attempt to catch his breath. What's your damage, kid? I didn't answer. I couldn't if I wanted to. In that moment, he might as well have not existed. 
in the commotion as I grabbed the flashlight up off the floor. The beam hit something else that was in the room with us. Something neither of us had noticed at first. What are you doing now? The man asked down at me, my eyes fixed on something off to the side. All I could do was swallow hard and give my head a shaky nod in the right direction, directing him to where to look. His head was nearly perfect, completely untouched. Not a speck of dirt or blood or hair out of place, but from the neck down, every piece of skin, muscle, fat, everything had been carefully peeled away from the bone and pinned to the wall behind and the floor underneath. Oh my God, Wesley? I asked to nobody as I began to throw up in my mouth and then everywhere else. What did you do to- I tried to ask the man between the wrenches of my fighting back waves of vomit, but suddenly the man broke out into a violent fit of screams before crumbling to the ground, clutching the back of his knee. What do you think? Haley asked as I turned to see her bouncing on the balls of her feet, waiting for my approval. A large kitchen knife held in her hands, the tip freshly stained red with the screaming man's blood. What do you mean, what do I think? What the fuck is going on here? I shouted, trying to look anywhere but at what was left of Wesley. Hopefully I'll get better with practice, she said, smiling as she beamed down at me. I wanted Wesley to still be alive when you got here, but I kept thinking about him hitting you and that bruise on your chest and... Well, I started at the toes, and I think he was dead by the time I got to his waist. She explained, tilting her head to consider the carnage she caused. Anyway, Merry Christmas, she added cheerfully. Realizing the situation I was in, just in time to keep my panic on the inside and not yell at her anymore, so I shakily just said, Oh yeah. You really put a lot of effort into this, I see. So I guess this means that all the pets and Donna... Was me too? Mm Mm-hmm. I didn't have anything against the pets, though. It's more to see what their owners would do when they disappeared. She stated bluntly. But the more we talked about it, the more I kept wondering how it would feel, you know? With a real person. And then that night with Donna... So you really did all of that to her? I did. The stomach was the best part. It was hard to do because I was using stitches at first, and they kept breaking. But then I got a hold of a medical stapler. Keeping her from bleeding to death was really hard, though. I looked up a lot of C-section stuff to figure it out. Good thing we were the same blood type. I used the tube from the bicycle tire because the long valve made it easy to keep it on the outside so I could use the pump to inflate it whilst it was still inside of her. You should have heard the sounds she made. She exclaimed as casually as if she was presenting a book report at school. Better than any movie you've ever seen. I tried to keep her alive as long as I could with some medical tricks and first aid stuff I found on the internet, but she gave out after a few days. Infection, I think. She said, almost disappointed at the fact. Haley, I I don't... I don't know what I'm supposed to... How am I supposed to take the... I tried to say, but as I spoke, the man started trying to drag himself out of the room and away from what was happening inside. Sorry, but I have to deal with this real quick. Haley apologized as she stood behind him, the massive kitchen knife still in her hands. Then her eyes went from me to the man desperately trying to crawl for his life, pulling his crippled, bloody leg along the floor behind him as he groaned in agony. I didn't lie, you know. She spoke to me as she positioned herself above the man, now begging for his life. My parents did get a divorce, but I didn't say why, did I? She asked me as she leaned down and poked at the hole in the man's leg with her finger. Don't think you mentioned it, no, I stuttered. My dad was a doctor. A surgeon, actually. We had plenty of money and everyone thought he was such a hero. But they never knew what he'd do when we were alone. 
she said as she let the light bounce off the huge knife she was still holding. He'd get me alone and say, let's play doctor, and then he'd make a cut with his knife right from our kitchen. He liked this one for some reason. Not deep enough to kill me or need to go to the hospital or anything, but deep enough to need stitches. She continued, pulling her shirt up to show her stomach to reveal what looked like dozens and dozens of scars all over her body. I can still hear him say, Be not afraid, little angel, like he's standing right beside me. When my mom found out, she called the cops and filed for a divorce right then. But a lot of good that did me. All the men she had coming and going from the house after that, and all the... What did your mom call it? Funny business I had to deal with while she was passed out drunk, drugged, on the couch or in her room. And having my two half-brothers get left behind to remind me of that every single day. We don't even know who their dad is. Anyway... She stopped as she leaned down and slowly pushed the blade of the knife into the middle of the man's back, causing him to release another horrible scream that echoed through the building. I couldn't move. I couldn't speak. I couldn't do anything but feel the tears roll down my cheek as I watched her repeatedly insert the knife into his back over and over until the screams died down and he finally stopped moving completely. Here, you want to try? She asked all of a sudden, extending the knife for me to take. I felt so different, so weird for so long. I'm so, so happy I found someone else who really understands me. I couldn't take it anymore. I gritted my teeth together and tore out of the back room through the darkness of the rest of the building, stumbling and falling and crashing into rusty beams and machines until I finally found my way out and ran back home, crying hysterically every step of the way. I collapsed on the front lawn and laid there long enough until I could stop dry heaving and crying so my mom wouldn't notice. I started asking questions when I finally went inside. After I walked in, I went straight to my room and made as little noise as possible so my mom wouldn't hear me come in. I spent all night curled up in a ball on my bed, finding the urge to break out in tears again. But not for the reason I would have thought. Something about turning and running away from Haley like that broke my heart. The last thing I saw when I ran away was the deeply sorrowful look of abandonment on her face. Like she didn't. She couldn't understand what was happening. Why I suddenly just left her like that. And it, more than anything, was eating away at me. I guess it's true what they say. Love is a hell of a drug after all. I was so terrified that the next day I barely left my room except to use the bathroom. Only occasionally I would get out of bed and sneak peeks out through the curtains to see if Haley was out there. Not entirely sure whether I did or didn't want her to be there. Part of me wanted to talk to her and explain to her that she wasn't okay and needed help. But another part of me wanted her to be as far away from me as possible. And they didn't want to cooperate. At one point I found myself standing in front of the post that she gave me. My hand hovering near the top, ready to rip it off the wall. But after lingering there for several minutes, I let my arm droop down to my side and walked away, sinking back down to my bed. Later that night, my emotions got the better of me again when my mom finally suspected something was wrong. When she noticed how I was acting and that Haley wasn't around, said something about how hard the first breakup can be. Something about that not being able to tell her what was really going on and everything else got to me and I broke down and cried for at least several hours till I was finally able to fall asleep. And that's when I heard it. I woke up to the soft, slow, rhythmic sound of great green gobs of greasy grimy gopher guts, mutilated monkey meat, dirty little birdie feet, 
French fried eyeball swimming in a pool of blood. I could hear the faint singing from just outside of my bedroom window. Great green gobs of greasy grimy gopher guts, mutilated monkey meat, crushed up a parakeet, wormy vomit flowing down a filthy street. I took my head under the blanket as the song got louder and louder, more tears rolling from my eyes as I clenched them tight. Purple pails of every color of porpoise bus, mutilated monkey meat, sautéed skunk tails, always such a tasty treat, if only I had a spoon. Please go away. I begged as I began to hear the rhythmic tink of something metal against my window, turning to see her shadow cast against the curtain from the street light outside. Please just leave me alone. Remember, you promised promised you wouldn't tell were the last words I ever heard her say to me both threatening and sad at the same time right before the total silence filled my room again as her silhouette vanished after that I refused to go back to school I wouldn't even set foot outside until my dad finally came home and decided he'd move us out of the state and put me in homeschooling program after my stubborn protest about returning to the school for any reason. But that brings us to why, after almost 20 years, I'm telling you about this. Well, it's that I kept my promise against everything I knew was good and right. I kept my promise. But she still got found out. Eventually, the cops found some DNA evidence that linked her to the three murders. The problem is, they never caught her. She just disappeared without a trace. The local kids even made a goddamn urban legend out of her. They even have one of those stupid rituals they do in everything. Haley Handiwork, they call her. It's disgusting and I hate every single time I run across it online. So where am I going with this? Why even write this all out, you might ask? Well, last week on the news I saw a segment about a young couple brutally massacred and butchered in their home. And by the way it was described, I figured I needed to get this out there. Yeah, this secret out after all this time. So I called the police in that area and told them everything. They didn't even pay attention to me. I barely finished before they hung up. So, I wrote it off as doing all I could. But then today I got a letter in the mailbox. No address. No stamps. Nothing but a piece of paper inside that said only five words. Five words that make me think I probably won't get another chance to tell you my story for a while. Five words that said... You promised. See you tomorrow.